and then, and then Bible study Monday and Tuesday and then back here, but it seems like it's been forever since I've been here. Amen. I hope everybody's come expecting tonight. <laughs> and uh, I know these young ones is expecting. I see a bunch of them in their pajamas for a pajama party. So, but uh, I was riding, I was riding, I was riding around today, and I do a lot of studying as I drive. I know it don't sound, it sounds, and I kind of repeat after it. For some reason, I could not focus today, brother Orny. I could not focus. I was in Second Samuel, fifteen. And I think I went over it like three times. And finally, when I stopped, I said, I've got to get, I've got to get something here. I've got to, it's not like me to listen and not remember something. But I could not remember anything for some reason. I just kind of felt like it was odd. Because how many times have we read the word and not got something? But how many times have we seeked after it? You know, because there's something there. I know there's something there for me because God's got me going through Samuel, first and second. I know there's meat there. But for some reason, I couldn't focus. But I made myself focus. A little persistence will pay off. In your walk with Christ, just a little bit will go a long ways. So many times, though, we drop the ball, like we read it and say, well, we ain't getting nothing out of that. Read it again and again and again until you get something. You know, I, I kind of, after the third time going through it, I was like, that's starting to stick now. I'm starting to get a little bit here. You know, it's not, it's unlike, it's, it's not like me to be reading and not get something. Like, usually as I'm studying, I'm totally focused on the word. I, I can chew bubble gum and walk at the same time, per se, or drive and, and study the Bible. But I said that to tell you tonight that, that, you know, just a little bit of persistence. When you don't feel it, keep pushing. When you can't get it, keep reading. There's something there. There's a reason why you can't focus on it. Amen. Don't settle for nothing. Get something from it. I know God had me in it. And I wasn't going to quit reading it until I figured out what God was trying to give me. I could have gave up on it. Just been done. I read. I read. You know, I, I, I got in the word, Brother Richard. I could have I been happy. But I went through a couple chapters. But it's not the same. It is You can hear it. You can read it. But if you ain't focused on it when you do it, you're missing something. And I didn't want to miss nothing. I know that sounds crazy in day and times that we're in today. The, the hardest thing to do is get somebody focused on the Word of God. But I enjoy. I enjoy the Word because the Word comes alive in me. It stirs something in me. I have a fire burning on the inside of me. And it fuels that fire. That flame gets bigger and bigger. The closer to God that I get, seeking God, praying, reading the word. It's not nothing that I do, but it's what God is building inside of me. Amen. It's not a respecter of person. He'll do the same for you. But sometimes we have to dig in, press in when we don't feel it. Amen. I got a few announcements on go before we get started. Youth and young kids this Sunday, 3.30, drummer practice. Both the youth drummer team and the young kids, 3.30, drummer practice. Also Friday, December the 17th, the blood drive here at the church from 12 to 5. Get with Sister Jenny if you want to uh, schedule a time to come. If you can't schedule a time, come on anyway. They'll work you in. As much as they call needing blood, I'm sure that they, they'd be more than glad to see you on a whim. Just come in when you can. If you can't give her a, a certain time, just be here. Show up's the main thing, and they can do the rest. Amen. Also, December the 18th, feed my sheep. See Sister Cherie. 
for Brother Anthony, if you would like to assist in that, that's Saturday. So you got the blood donation Friday from 12 to 5. Feed my sheep Saturday morning. Amen. If you can't help out, you can't volunteer in it, pray for them. Amen. Also, December the 20th, Ladies' Christmas Party. That's next Monday. It's going to be Finger Foods, uh, 6.30 in the Fellowship Hall. Sign-up sheets out there on the bulletin board. If you ain't signed up for what you're bringing, I hope you have by now. Uh, also, bring your secret sister gift for reveal. And if you want to play the Ladies' Gift Exchange, bring a $20 wrap gift. So, ladies, Monday, ladies, me, y'all gonna figure out who your secret sister is. Brought you all them nice gifts all throughout the year. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Is everybody happy in Jesus tonight? Y'all would stand. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. I really hated to bore everybody with my with my spill word, but you know I can't I can't help but think that I'm not the only one that that's read the word or tried to study the word and ain't got something right then. But they, I want to encourage you that, hey, if you'll, if you'll press in on it, you'll get what you're seeking. It's a guarantee. You might have to read it a couple times. You might have to pray a little bit and then read it again. But amen, you can get it. Glory to God. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this night. Father, thank you for this opportunity, God, just to be in your house, Father. Lord, we praise you, God, for everything that you've done and going to do, Father. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for everything that you've done, God. Lord, we pray that you move in this service, God, move in our hearts and our minds. Father, cultivate our mind that we can receive the word that's been prepared tonight. Father, just be with us as we go throughout the rest of this week, Father. Just, just guide our steps, Father. We ask it all in the lovely name of Jesus. And the church said, Amen.
river of joy, no not a cold no not needy, not wasting. We're gonna jump right in, not a cold no not needy, not wasting. We're gonna jump right in. It's over my head, 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 the river of joy, the river of joy, it's over my head, 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 the river of joy, the river of joy, and I've got joy down in my soul. I got a peace that I won't let go. Like a river rising higher. I got joy. I got joy. No, not a gold No, not needy. Not wasting. We're gonna jump right in. Not a gold No, not needy. Not wasting. We're gonna jump right in. It's over my head. 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 The river of joy. The river of joy. It's over my head. 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 The river of joy, the river of joy. I've got joy down in my soul. I've got I can hear the sound of the river coming down. It's coming down. Oh, I can hear the sound of the river coming down. I can hear the sound of the river coming down. I can hear the sound of the river coming down. It's coming down. Listen to the sound. Listen to the sound. Listen to the sound. Listen to the sound. The river's coming down. Listen to the sound. Listen to the sound. Listen to the sound. Listen to the sound. The river's coming down. It's coming down. It's coming down. Oh, I can hear the sound. Of the river coming down, I can hear the sound of the river coming down. I can hear the sound of the river coming down. It's coming down. It's coming down. Oh, I can hear the sound of the river coming down. Oh, I can hear the sound of the river coming down. Oh, I can hear the sound of the river coming down. It's coming down. It's coming down. Oh, can you hear the sound? Can you hear the sound? Can you hear the sound? Oh, can you hear the sound? The river's coming down. It's coming down. It's coming down. Oh, can you hear the sound? The river coming down. Can you hear the sound of the river coming down? Can you hear the sound of the river coming down? It's coming down. It's coming down. Oh, can you hear the sound? Oh, can you hear the sound? Listen to the sound. Can you hear the sound? The river's coming down. Oh, listen to the sound. Listen to the sound. Listen to the sound. Listen to the sound. The river's coming down. Listen to the sound. 
river coming down. Listen to the sound of the river coming down. Listen to the sound of the river coming down. It's coming down. It's coming down. Oh, I can hear the sound. I can hear the sound. I can hear the sound. The river's coming down. It's coming down. It's coming down. Listen to the sound. Listen to the sound. Listen to the sound. Listen to the sound. The river's coming down. Oh, can you hear the sound? Can you hear the sound? Can you hear the sound? Oh, can you hear the sound? The river's coming down. Can you hear the sound of the river coming down? Can you hear the sound of the river coming down? It's coming down, it's coming down. Oh, can you hear the sound? 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 The river's coming down. Oh, I I can hear the sound of the river coming down. I can hear the sound of the river coming down. It's coming down. If I can hear the sound, listen to the sound. I can hear the sound. Can you hear the sound? I can hear the sound. The river's coming down. Oh, I can hear the sound. I can hear the sound. Listen to the sound. I can hear the sound. The river is coming down. Listen to the sound. Listen to the sound. Listen to the sound. Listen to the sound. The river is coming down. Nothing, no place, no one else. 
Are you hungry? Are you thirsty for righteousness? I was sitting there thinking about when Jacob said, Surely the Lord has been in this place and I knew it not. Glory to God. It made me think about, it's been years ago, probably 22 years ago, we were in a service to where the praise and worship team was worshiping. And man, you can sense and you can feel the presence of God. It wasn't so much that you can feel it, you just knew it. Glory to God. It wasn't the, the, the when the psalmist said, surely the Lord is in this place, and I knew it not. See, if you read other translations, that the Lord is in this place, and now I know it. Glory to God. So it's one of them deals you say, I know that he's here. I sense him in this place. I feel him in this place. And we were in a service, and man, it was powerful. You can feel the anointing of God. A lot like a lot of our services. It, it, it just, uh, sometimes, it, uh, as, as I heard Paul make a statement, it appalls me. But sometimes, it blows my mind. I hear someone say, man, I, I didn't feel nothing. I didn't sense nothing. I, didn't, I couldn't feel the presence of God. How long have you been dead? It's time to be a ri- revived. And live again. But we were in this service and the power of God was so strong that you can sense it. It was what it's one of them deals you didn't have to say, surely the Lord is in this place. And I knew it not. You said, surely the Lord is in this place. And I know it. Man, we were worshiping God. The praise and worship team was playing. Uh, Mark Thomas, I believe, was one of them playing the guitar. Brother Gary Cleveland's dad and brother Chuck was singing, praise team was singing and the worship was going up and the praise was going up and the worship was going down and the glory was falling down. And nobody knew it, but the Lord was in that place. Man, I feel it. I feel it all over my body and the air conditioner ain't blowing on me. 
I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. And after service, Lisa comes to me and says, who is that guy in the white on the platform during praise and worship? Yeah, she was in the nursery watching it on the monitor. And, and her and Jacob was back there watching kids. And on the monitor, she said, who is that guy? And and she said what made her notice him that he was he was dressed in white. And he was jumping with everything in, like he was trying to leap for the ceiling, just worshiping God. Standing behind all of them that was worshiping, just leaping and jumping. She said he was clean, had a, a just a clean cut beard, black, and said he was just in that white suit. And said he was just jumping, leaping, and worshiping. And I looked around in the church and I said, nobody's here in white. I said, your brother's got a white sweater on was the only person in the church with something white on and it was the white she said i know my brother it wasn't him she said i'm telling you he was worshiping she said i sent jacob out and said see who that is jacob went out and then when he came back of course when he come out he said he didn't see him could see him on the monitor but couldn't see him when he came into the sanctuary but goes back in there to where the kids is at and of course chaos was in there i guess with the kids and they just let it go to the end of service. But when she came up to me, Gary Cleveland was standing there and she said, who is the guy in the white? And I said, ain't nobody in here in white. And he's, ain't nobody was up there. And then brother Chuck started coming down the platform, coming that way. And brother Gary turned to him and said, she said, somebody was up there in white. And he hit the floor. And he's just laying out on the floor. He said, I knew it. He said, I felt him when he came into the building. I'm telling you. I felt him when he came into the building tonight. Someone said he was here the whole time. I felt the presence of God fill this house a while ago when they were singing in an unfamiliar. I knew the Lord was in this place, and I know it. I didn't see no angel jumping. I didn't see no one in white jumping. But I know that the Lord is in this place. Glory to God. If you leave with a need tonight, it's going to be on you. God's able to save you. God's able to heal you. And God's able to take care of you. Man, I tell you, I feel the presence of God. I wish you just take a moment. We're about to dismiss classes. And then I'm, I'm going to minister, Lord willing, with the help of the Holy Spirit. And I want you to take a few minutes. Do like the psalmist of David and have a self-examination of your own heart. Say, Lord, search me. God, take a thorough look at me as I take a thorough look at me. And God, create in me a right spirit. Create in me a clean heart. Lord, search me, God. And if there be any wicked way found in me, God, cleanse me from it. Reveal it to me. Help me, God. Lord, Lord, search me. Lord, help me. Lord, I pray tonight for this youth. I pray tonight for these young people. I pray for these children. I pray for these adults. I pray for glory to God, the younger, the older, and all alike. I pray for those on live stream. I pray, God, minister and touch lives. I pray, God, that we never be the same. God, touch Tatum, touch Gunner as they lost their father this week, God. I pray touch families that are grieving, families that are hurting all over Kentucky and all over Tennessee and Arkansas, Missouri, and all the places that were impacted by the storms, touch them and minister. Lord, touch their lives and give them strength this time of year, God. And I pray for the peace of God to fill their hearts and their lives and their homes, the ones that have homes and the ones that do not, God. I pray for safety in their lives. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Classes are being dismissed this evening. Glory to God. Youth and Sister Linda and, and all this pajama party people. Glory to God. We'll preach on pajamas when they get out of here. But Amen. <laughs> Hold up. I see some of y'all that ain't got pajamas leaving. Y'all better get back in here. <laughs> I busted them out, didn't I? Glory to God. Amen. Keep the charge of the Lord. Man, I, I feel the presence of God. I don't know 
if you sense that. Sometimes, you know, I, I'm not trying to, to be like contradicting what I said, but sometimes I come in and I feel, I feel like, Lord, where are you? And then it's, it's, that's the time that you live by faith and you say, God, I may not sense nothing. I may not feel it, but I know you're here. I know you're here. Glory to God. I look around and say, I may not, you may not get yours, I'm going to get mine. Amen. When that music starts and that worship, I can sense it, I can feel it, and I think, Lord, to God. But sometimes, old devil tries to come to my mind, you know, when you're doing them things that they're doing and says, people's watching you. Yes, praise God, maybe they'll get free. A lot of folks. Amen. Glory to God. Shouldn't be but one person with a stiff shoulder, and that's Brother Butch, and the rest of us ought to be able to praise God. Woo! Meddling now, ain't I? First Kings 2, 1 through 4. It's uh when David's about to depart and he leaves a charge and he's talking to Solomon. Amen. I, I think that's the way we are to all be. Get ready when we depart. What did Paul say? My time of departure is at hand. Glory to God. I fought a good fight. I kept the faith. That, that's the way it ought to be when, you, when you're a saint of God. When you get older and you realize that, man, my eyes getting it, getting time, you start raising people up and say, glory to God. My time is at hand. Somebody ought, to, somebody ought to be left to be able to take the mantle and go. Glory to God. Amen. Now the days of David draw near that he should die. And he charged Solomon, his son, saying, I go the way of all the earth. Be thou strong, therefore, and show yourself a man. You know basically what he was telling him? Be a man. Grow up. Be strong. Don't, don't act like you have as, as a child. I want you to be a man now. We think Solomon grew up different than our children, but they all grew up the same. And a man of God speaks to us just as a man of God was speaking to him. Think about that. Children, then when we get older, we should be leaving the legacy. And we should be able to or whoever. And I'm going to get into some. And keep the charge of the Lord. Keep the charge of the Lord. Right here is where it pinned out. And keep the charge of the Lord, your God, to walk in his ways, to keep his statues. And to keep his commandments and his judgments and his testimonies as it, is, as it is written in the law of Moses that you may prosper in all that you do and wheresoever you go, turn yourself. Listen to this. He said that the Lord may continue his word which he spoke concerning me saying if your children take heed to their ways to walk before me in truth with all their heart and with all their soul, there shall not fail thee, said he, a man on the throne of Israel. Listen, David was telling Solomon, he said, if, if you'll do what's right, if you'll do, if the children of God will do what's right, if the children will take heed to their ways, to walk before me in truth. Now, if you really want to know, this is prophecy all the way back and kings prophesying of what the Lord would say, say, because he's talking about right here. He said, look after me, which we ain't looking after man, but let me get back where it was at. Before me, in truth, with all their heart and with all their soul, there shall not fail thee, said he, a man on the throne of Israel. And we know there were some issues. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day for this time, for this word. I pray, help us to teach. Help us to minister, God, and help us understand. Open up our spiritual ears to hear your word, God, that we leave different than we came in, in Jesus' name. In effect, after verse 4 says, in effect, David is saying what? Who? Saying that whoever sits on the throne of Israel must adhere strictly to the word of God. Hence, him giving this great charge is the provision in the previous verses. Listen to what he's saying. He's saying, should strictly to the word, must adhere strictly to the word of God. He's saying, those that 
rule the, the kingdom, the throne. And I'm looking at that thinking, that's the same today, not that we are a king, but we have a pulpit or we stand as men of God or women of God that we should be hearing from the word of God and strictly from the word of God. I've heard people give people advice and I wanted to say something, but I thought, you know, I'll just say this, let everything that you do be led of the spirit of God from the word of God. And if someone gives you advice that don't line up with the word of God and you throw it away right in front of them, let them see you say, you know what? I don't need that kind of advice. I need good godly counsel. Because the Bible talks about godly counsel and the multitude of counselors, their safety. And you need to make sure who you're getting. You know, I, I ain't never understood why someone's be one of the brokest people you ever met is trying to give somebody some financial advice. And maybe it's because they've made so many poor decisions. They're saying, hey, let me tell you what not to do. You know, that, that may be it. But I'm just saying, if you're going to get some advice, you know, if you want to know where there's some good food, I can tell you. And you can look at some good food. Glory to God. I really do. Amen. So that, you know, you, you can look at who's giving you the advice, but find out, but make sure every bit of the advice you get is godly and strictly from the Word of God. Because every time, and you know, when you get to reading this, he's telling them to take heed to their ways, to walk before me in truth with all their heart and with all their soul. There shall not fail thee, said he, a man on the throne of Israel. But he's telling them to, to listen to the Word of God. Listen, when you go back up and you listen where it's talking about testimony, status, uh, com co commandment, judgment, testimony, all that. that. Every bit of that means the Word of God. Every bit of that is a word for the Bible. And we're going to get into something in a little bit out of Psalms 9, 119. That every verse in it says something about the Bible and about the instructions of the Bible. It says testimony, way by whatever, you know, it's just got one of them. I'll get into it in a minute, let you hear it. But every one of them, except for four verses and that whole thing, and it's 176 verses. So I believe that the psalmist, which is a lot of prophecy for the Messiah, is trying to tell us, if you want any sense at all, get into the Word. If you... Amen? Listen, listen to what the... Deuteronomy 29 and 9. Glory to God. Deuteronomy 29 and 9. Keep therefore the word of the covenant, of this covenant, and do them that you may that you do. You know, we always think prosper me. That's not what he said. Now you got to listen to what he said. He said, keep therefore the words of this covenant and do them that you may prosper in all that ye do. That means that means work, that means finances, that means eat, that means everything that you do. That means your home life, your, your, your work life, your church life, your serving God life. Everything that you do will prosper if you do it in the right respect. If you do it and live in a truthful life, what it said before, when you go back to the first kings or second kings, whatever, well, I believe it's first kings, but you go back and you live a truthful life and live the way of the Lord, and you'll prosper in everything you do. Amen? I, I'm, a, I'm a true living example of that. And someone said, are you being both? No, 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 no. I, I know that I watch the Weather Channel on a regular basis. It can change tomorrow. You know what? <laughs> tomorrow. It can happen tomorrow. Tomorrow you can be broke. Tomorrow you can be in bad shape. Tomorrow your health. When they die, they don't say, you know, I'm glad I had all these riches. I spent more time with my family. Wish I spent more time with this. Wish I spent more time with the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. That's good teaching. I know you don't like that. Listen, prosperity has always followed a true obedience of the word. Did you hear that? Prosperity has always true obedience of the word of the Lord. I don't they, that and they don't believe that. But I can tell you that if you're not being obedient to the word of God, blessings ain't going, you know, it says in Psalm, what does it say? Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. If you go back 
I, I believe it's Deuteronomy to where, and it may be a number where it's talking about the blessings of the Lord all the way from 1 to 14 and how they'll chase you down and run you down. And glory to God, blessings will be all over you. Be blessed in the field, blessed in the house, blessed in the, blessed everywhere. Amen? There's a whole lot more cursings when you go from 14 all the way out. A whole lot more. And I thought, my God. And someone said, well, that's the Old Testament. Listen, the Old Testament gives us an example of the new. Thank God for Jesus in the New Testament and the mercy and the grace. But glory to God, He still wants you to live up. Live out 400 something commandments, but what were you having trouble with? Thou shalt not kill. Were you having trouble with sleeping with your neighbor's wife? Were you having trouble with stealing? Were you having trouble? With, you know, that's just the, the basics hitting, but you know, you should live truthfully as you know to. And don't worry if you do something that's not right. The Spirit of God, if you have the Spirit of God living in you, People got the Spirit of God or not? If they just live, I think, glory to God, they ain't got the same thing I got. They didn't get the same thing I got on July 20th, 1997, because I got a change. And I'm I'm going to dare say most of them that I run into wasn't the hellion that I was before it. Someone told me he just cussed. Get over it. We'll pray about it in a minute. I said, hellion. But, you know, what's wrong with that? It's the truth. I, I was sorry. I wasn't no count. I wasn't worth nothing. All I wanted to do was party. All I wanted to do is drink. All I wanted to do is celebrate. All I wanted to do is get. I had my own agenda. I wanted to do. I was my God. I was living my life. And that's that's biblical. But then when you come into salvation, it's being obedient to the word of God. You find out your life ain't yours to live no way. That's why he said it's no longer I that live, but Christ that lives in me. It's no longer your life. That's why I, 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 I'll paraphrase it. I hope I'm in the right chapter, but I think it's Luke 6 and 46, one of my favorite passages. Jesus said, why do you call me Lord if you ain't going to do what I say? You know what he was saying, don't you? He said, "Don't if you're not going to do what I say, I am not your Lord. That's why people get mad at me. They'll be like, you know, everybody's got a child. Everybody's got, you know, that's your brother. That's your sister. If they're born again, if they're blood bought, if they're John 3 and 3, they're my brother. That gets people, you know, it gets them mad, really. So I'm careful who I say that to. Amen. But I do, I do not, when people start saying everybody's God's child, I say, well, everybody's God's creation. Amen. Glory to God. Brother, I like that preaching. That's the truth. Josh, Joshua 25 and 5. Listen, it says, but take diligent heed to do the commandments and the law, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, charged you to love the Lord your God and to walk in. I can't say that word. Really. That word messes us up big time. And to walk in all his ways and to keep his commandments and to cleave unto him and to serve him with all of your heart. You ever hear someone say, God is not going to be second? He's going to be number one? Well, I'm going to tell you something. A lot of married people have a problem with that. I've seen married people that you think, my God, if he don't go, she ain't going. If she don't go, he ain't going. Well, I can tell you, if she don't go, goodbye, Felicia. I, <laughs> glory to God. I plan on serving Jesus. If she goes plumb crazy and decides at the end of her life, I'm just not going to make it. Amen. You think I'm wrong and go with her? She knows I love her. I'm not trying to be demeaning or nothing, but I'm telling you, Brother Richard, Brother Bush, if she don't make it, I'm still going. I'm going. I plan on serving God, and if something happens, I lose my mind, I pray, God, please. You know, the other day I was having some issues, and I said, Lord, just don't let me suffer. Just take me. But I mean, if I suffer, 
You know, I preached on it here a few weeks ago. If, if you have to suffer, then deal with the hardship that's been dished. Do it. Amen. Because God knows you can handle it or it wouldn't have took place. Someone said, man, I just couldn't have lost a child. Sure you could have. Millions of people's lost children. People go off the war every day and people die. And then we say, Lord, why me? Why not me? You know, others, we got to learn that God's showing us. Do I miss my son? Every day. Every day. Glory to God. But it don't mean that I don't learn how to cope with that. They don't, they don't learn how to move on with that. Then I look at his picture every day in my office and think, man, I can't believe it, but you still got to press on towards the high mark of the high calling of the Lord Jesus Christ, forgetting those things which are behind you, and go forward and say, I'm still here for a purpose. I'm still here for a reason. If you were done with me, you would have called me. So he's got me here for a reason. And it's to lead people to the cross. And not only after we get to the cross, is to teach people because one day like David did, like Paul did, like Jesus did, like all the saints of old did, there come a day, Paul said, my departure is at hand. There comes a day we're going to leave. Man, I done seen a bunch of friends die. I done got a bunch of family members dead. I done looked back and, and thought, my Lord, I seen one of my cousins today, and that's the thing that I thought. He was saying, well, everybody's dying. He sort of thought, called a few names, and I thought, Man, you only named a couple. There's a bunch of them. And that's it. And David said, I go the way of the, of the earth. And you know what? If the Lord tarries, we're going to go the way of the earth. Are we going to be able to lay there and say, Lord, I pray God just let them rise up. Hey, do what's right and live. And that's, man, David's writing a script. David's trying to tell them. That, that, you know, just, just love the Lord with all your heart. Keep His commandments. Live in His ways. Walk out the Word of God. Man, I'm, I'm, we're not sacrificing animals. We had the ultimate sacrifice. That's what's good about the New Testament. But now we can live like we're serving, like we are saved. Amen? To be an example to a lost and dying world. Did you know, I, I'm just going to go and give you this. Lord, help the world. Lord, help Prentice County. Did you know the churches of Prentice County is the only hope that our children have growing up in this community to know God? Yep. And, uh, what kind of example do they have? I used to always preach it. If you are half hearted, your kid's going to be about a quarter hearted. going to be no hearted. Think about that. What kind of example are we? The Bible said, train up in a child the way he should go in Proverbs 22 and 6. Do we do that? Man, I, 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 I try to correct other people. I don't try to correct them. I try to teach them. I try to put something inside them. I try to, I preached on it here a few weeks ago. I make a deposit. I plant a seed. I water. I believe God. And we're going to see something happen. Glory to God. You get enough people on fire for God, you, you, man, you'll see a blaze. People come in and play pity fat at church. And yeah, patty cake. Let me tell you something. When one of your loved ones is laying dying, you ain't going to be patty caking then. Ain't going to be all that laughing then. Ain't going to be all that horse playing then. Glory to God. It'll be a serious time. Amen? Glory to God. It's quiet now. I don't know why. Psalms. 119 and 2. 119 and 2. Blessed are they who keep His testimonies and who seek Him with the whole heart. Now listen to this. Blessed are they who keep His testimonies. Now, you know, testimony is another word for Bible. I'm going to give that to you. Watch this. It says, also, there are 10 different words used throughout this Psalms, which are each a word for the Bible. Actually, in all 176 verses, man, I went through just turning and it just looking and said, man, it's in every verse. 
listen to this. You can write these down if you want to. In every verse of 176 verses, with the exception of four, 90, 121, 122, and 132, the words are way, testimony, commandments, word, statutes, precepts, judgments, laws, truth, ordinance. We are to seek him with the whole heart and not with a divided heart. If you want them scriptures, I'll give them to you after service. But there was literally four verses out of 176 that didn't say something about the Bible in this whole song. And I said, man, how? what is it? What are you trying to say? Listen to this. Go to Psalms 119 and 111. It says, Thy testimonies have I taken as a heritage forever, for they are the rejoicing of my heart. So he's saying, thy, he's basically saying, Thy testimony, thy word, the Bible, the scriptures, thy word have I taken as my heritage forever, for they are the rejoicing of my heart. Do you know, no matter what I face, no matter what trial, no matter what tribulation, no matter what I'm going through, I always go to the Word. You know, there's a reason some of y'all, well, there's a reason hardly none of you get a phone call. I'll call my wife for prayer. I mean it. I'll call, but it, when it comes down to the nitty gritty and it gets to where I got to have a Word from God, I go to the Word of God. And I sit there. You know what to pray. Pray what you're thinking about. Pray what you're talking about. Pray what's on your heart. Go to the Word of God and say, I know something's in there about what I'm facing and open it up and find it. It's in there. And all you got to do, it's amazing. As dumb as I am, I know how to get on the phone and say, where does it say something about uh, the man with the legions of demons in the Bible? Oh, even I'm smart. Hard to believe in it. <laughs> I got one person shaking their head. Yes, I taught them at the church. Amen. He, see there? Even I know how to do it. They don't even know how to read. And don't know how to write. I ain't smart. We know when that Brother Justin, I get so mad. I first got saved for two years. Brother Noah, I'd ask people, how do you pray? How do you proceed? They don't understand. They thought I was just being silly. I didn't know how to pray. I didn't know how to read. And I'd ask them, how do you study? How do you read? How do you pray? How do you do that? You just you just do like you did in school. School? What's that? I quit in the eighth grade with a sixth grade education. That's the reason I quit. There was only two things I was doing good in, math and PE. I still go play in that. If y'all want, want to take math, I'll do math. And I'll play in PE. That was two things I did good. I didn't, I didn't know how to study. I, I don't, listen, I don't know when to cut it off. I didn't have but one amen there. She was like, no, you don't. But see, I didn't, I didn't know when you're reading something. You got to have a decibel there. You got to have a, one of them, I don't even know what it is. What is, what is that? Extra, you know, line and a dot on it. I just see it sometimes on paper. I'm like, oh, that's a good spot for that. Well, I, that, someone said, why don't you write a book? Where would you put a comma? I'd be like, hey, the only thing I know is if I'm asking you a question, I know I'll put a question mark. The rest of it, I was being serious. Help me. I don't know. And you know what I had to do? I had to get on my face. I had to pray. I had to cry out to God. And I'm like, God didn't know. I'm like, God, I'm not smart. God's up there. I know it. Keep praying. Ah, just like you're doing. It'll come to you. I know you can't read. Listen to the word. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. This is a true story. If you don't know how to read and you don't know how to write, I'm, I'm being honest. I did not miss church. If they was having church, I didn't care if we was having revival for 14 days straight. I was at church. 
I plan, I'll tell you, someone said, why? Because I didn't know how to read and write, and they were feeding me, man. I was living on it. I knew how to hear. I knew how to, they were like, man, what, Pastor Randy used to come back, he'd come preach revival. He'd come back two years later. I'd tell him things you preached. He said, I don't remember that. He said, you remember things I don't remember. I said, that's the only thing I got to remember. Because I didn't know how to write it down. I'm getting better. I write stuff down, but sometimes I look at it and say, Lord, What'd you have me write? What is that? <laughs> I know you didn't write that. I wrote that. Well, you know, the, the, that's all I had was going through life and not being able to read and write. I, I had a memory. I just had to pay attention when you did something, then I knew how to do it. How did it work for me? Man, I, the only thing I can tell you, if you're struggling having understanding, if you're struggling praying, if you're struggling reading, just go get by yourself. There's one of the greatest teachers, the greatest teacher I've ever met. He's the Holy Spirit. And when you start getting led by him and he starts telling you what to do, you'll do good in life. Glory to God. I'm getting ready to close. I know you don't believe that. Amen. I got one amen over there. We got one ready to go on. Glory to God. Joshua 1, 7 and 8. Only be thou strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all of the law. Listen to this. Which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Turn not from it to the right that you may prosper whether in other words, it don't even matter where you go. Amen? <laughs> if the Lord's calling you to go somewhere, just go. He's going to take care of you. Now, the Lord didn't tell you to go, don't go. Glory to God. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. Listen to this. He's saying, you should talk about it constantly. It should never depart from your mouth. You are to constantly talk about God. You know, I, Butch and Melissa may get tired of going with me. Every time I go somewhere, I talk about Jesus. And if you give me enough time with that waitress or that waiter, I'm going to plant a seed in them and be like, do you know Jesus? So you don't have to ask people if they're saved because everybody's saved. Amen? I even had someone tell me one time, I'm always trying to, you know, they have something on about faith, and Lisa get her nose in, and I'll be quiet. I'm trying to get something done here. You know, and I, I tell her, how do I, how do I get saved? Oh, you got to come to my church. I, I don't want to I'm going to get saved. Well, you got to come to church, talk to my pastor. And answer why you believe what you believe. To tell somebody how to come to Christ. You got to get to the cross. You got to give up your life. Just as he gave up his. Think about that for a moment. Glory to God. You got to die. And take up your cross daily. Glory to God. This book of the law is not the part out of your mouth. You should constantly talk about it. But you shall meditate therein day and night. Think about it constantly. That you may observe to do according. For then shall you make your way. And then shall you have good success. What a promise. A good, there's a, there's a reason some people are not successful. There's a reason, listen, there's a reason some people's life is not prosperous in everything that they do. Some of it's just maybe hard, I don't know. But if you line up with the Word of God, He can't, it's a, he can't lie. He's not a responsible. And just because we fall, you see, I could use that. Well, God, the Bible said that, you know, we'll have long life and we'll be satisfied when my son's dead. And I, you know, that's not too satisfying. And I could get all down and depressed, discouraged. But why? God's still faithful. God's still committed. God can't help it. He was a fast driver. Amen. That was on me to teach him that. Glory to God. He's just a hard-headed, heavy foot. That's the fact. That's the truth. It ain't something God did. I had pastors come to me. I'd be mad at God. For what? Well, here you are preaching the gospel. You've seen people saved. You've seen people healed. Seen two come out with brain damage that were supposed to be vegetables that would never live, and both of them lived. 
through prayer and fasting and believing God. But your son's dead. I've had them tell me, say, I would be mad. One of them was my pastor. Got saved under. People be mad at God. And for what? For what God did in my life? God saved me. He saved my wife. He got my children saved. And now my son's in heaven because what Jesus did. And I'm going to be mad. Amen. You read all the best books. You live your best life now. I'm not living my best life now. My best life is to come. I'm blessed while I'm living here, but my best life's to come. I'm going to be reunited with my family and most importantly, Jesus. Glory to God. I preached it at Jordan's funeral. I said, man, I just got some more treasure over to look for. I said, when I get there, I'm looking for the double J. I'm looking for Jesus and Jordan. Then I see Grandma and see the rest of them. Amen. That's it. It's what Jesus did causes me that I'll be able to live with him for eternity. If I believe the scriptures. Now, if I don't believe the scriptures, I should be mad. But I believe the scriptures. I believe the word of God to be true. Glory to God. Go ahead, Brother John. I believe I'm closed. Boy, I should have got a good amen. I got, I'm on Psalms 1, uh, 1, 3. It says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of scoffers. Scoff, scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doeth he meditate day and night. I'm going to tell you something. I've used these scriptures over and over again. Is there anyone ever just, man, I, I don't know about you, but sometimes I'm that person that I lay down and go to sleep pretty quick. But I know you won't believe this. I'm sitting there meditating over things I've read or heard during that day. And man, I, I go to sleep with a good thought. <laughs> man, I, I'm meditating on that. I, I'm meditating on that day and now I'm thinking, glory to God. God is good and all the time God's good. He's just good to me. Amen. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. I don't know if you caught something tonight, but most of the passages of scriptures that I read do, it's just, it prospers. What, whatever. And you, and we we wonder sometimes, why am I struggling? Maybe what you're doing is not, maybe you're, maybe you're not living truthfully. Maybe you're not living the way of the Lord or living the way of the law, living the way of the testimony, living the way of the judgments, living the way of the Lord and walking out this thing called the gospel. Amen. Maybe that's the key. I don't know. Maybe that's for somebody. I don't know. It's just I know this much. I've said it a time. If someone's being blessed, you ought to find out what they're doing to be blessed. Amen? I ain't talking about just in their finances or their vehicles. or they Just find out. what. Say, man, what is it? Can I tell you something? It's meditating on the Word of God day and night. I've had, I've had people say, I'm tickled about it. I thank God for it. Hey, all your dad, so you know who they was talking to. All your dad wants to do is talk about Jesus. That's not so. Sometimes I talk about basketball. Sometimes I talk about camping. Sometimes I, believe me, sometimes I talk about food. But my favorite subject is Jesus. My God, He's my Lord, He's my Savior. So just a few years ago, man, after I started pastoring, I, I didn't even know, people didn't know that. I didn't fake it till I make it. I knew God called me to do something, and I just did it. You don't know how many times until I figured out the smartphone would help me that I had to smell, spell Christ and I would go to my Bible and I'd say, I know it's in Matthew. 
They, it says Christ in Matthew. I remember that. And I would look at it and learn how to spell it and write it down. Jesus. I couldn't even spell it, Brother Jarvis, but I loved him with all my heart. I'd have to go to my Bible and look at it and say, how you spell Jesus, Lord? You ain't holding that against me. And he said, you're learning now. Sometimes you, the work ain't for salvation, but it's for learning. She didn't even know half of that stuff, I'm sure. But it would bother me for a while. I'd be like, God, how am I going to teach? How am I going to preach? I don't even know how to spell Jesus. I, I had to go. And I was preaching. I would go home and think, how am I going to preach? And God would deal with me with something, and I'd be like, I think that's in Hebrews. I'd go to it, I'd find it, and I'd see how to spell it and write it on my paper. Amen? Now, I'm going to tell you what I had. I had a heart to know my God. I had a heart to know my Savior. And I had a heart to meditate and I had a heart to pray. And I said, God, I've got to know you. Please teach me and show me. And when you start praying like that, God knows. He said, those that hunger and thirst shall be filled. And their ways will prosper. I didn't have enough sense to get out of the rain. But God was blessing me. And I'm thinking, God, why are you blessing me? He said, because I ain't looking at you. I'm looking at your heart. I used to tell them playing ball all the time. I beat them old young boys all the time. And they'd be like, how come we can't beat you? You got to have a heart. And you got to have a heart for God. And the only way to see people saved is live a life in front of them. Glory to God. Listen to this, the last passage of Scripture. Though through thy commandments, though through thy commandments has made me wiser than mine enemies, for they are ever with me. I want you to hold up a minute, Brother John. Did y'all, did, listen, this, my first thought when I looked at that was, my enemies are ever, didn't you, did you get that? Your enemies are ever with you. When you read that, is, the, is that the way you feel? He's like, he says, Thou, though, through thy commandments has made me wiser than my enemies, for they are ever with me. What's ever with you? His commandments. His word. That's how you're wiser than anybody. Not that you're trying to than your enemies because of the commandments, because of the Word of God. Ever with you. It's something they can't take away. Sister Miranda, they can't take it away from you. And that's why the psalm hide thy word in my heart. They don't sin because he said, I have in your word in my heart. Why? They can't take it from you. And that's why Jesus said, don't worry about them that, that can kill the body and do all about him that can take body, life, soul, and everything and cast into hell. He's who you better fear. And we're about the other stuff. So if we are students of the Word of God and we're learning and we have understanding, we need to have the Word in our heart that we know how to deal with every situation. And I'm closing. We're getting ready to close. Go ahead. It says, 99. I have more understanding than all my teachers. For thy testimonies are my meditation. <laughs> Ain't that something? Listen, it, and this is really a, a, a prophecy like, but you go back and read it for yourself. But it even goes for today. You know, people that teach you sometimes, they think, man, how would you know that? Because I meditate on it day and night. I ain't doing it to try to say, you know what? You've been saved a whole lot more than me, but I know more. I don't do that. That's not the reason that I do it. The reason that I do it is I have more understanding than all my teachers for thy testimonies are my meditation. And when he said testimonies, that goes back to them 10 words that were in Psalms 119 that went through 176 verses, then only four verses that they weren't in. And the rest of it was saying something about the Word, the Bible. And that's what that word testimony is. So the Bible 
is my meditation. Think about that. She may get tired of hearing it. I don't know. People tell me all the time. I invite people to church sometimes, man. I hear you preach all the time. Glory to God. Why? It's my meditation. It's what I, I don't want to put a roof on. I want to talk to someone about Jesus. You put the roof on. Glory to God. Go ahead. 100 in closing. Brother John, you'll have to pray something. I think they're in the back having a little party. I'm going to go back there and get a cupcake in a minute while y'all pray. Because I don't pray. <laughs> oh, I still have to stay and pray one. I understand more than the ancients because I keep thy precepts. What's the precept? The word. The Bible. And he understands more than the ancient. Why? The ancient was looking forward to the promise. And we look back to the cross. So we're looking to Christ. We already know the promise. Listen. And he said, I, I understand more than the ancients because I keep thy precept. I'm going to tell you something. If you're ever going to be affected in the kingdom of God, you're going to have to pray. Listen, I had a preacher tell me one time. He didn't tell me. He told the whole church. We were down the hill, and he was he was preaching a revival. I ain't, I ain't calling no names, but he said, I know some of y'all are, are word men. He said, I think you got to pray. I'm not a word man. I'm a prayer man, I thought. I thought to myself as I was sitting there, I don't even know how to pray without the word. I don't know who to pray to without the word. I don't know there is any blessings without the word. I don't know there. I don't know I have. Hey, glory to God. The word. So, yes, I'm a word man. But I'm also. I think it. I think it's a, a teamwork. I think we need the word. I think we need to pray. I think we need to seek God. And I think we need to be led by the Holy Ghost. On a not on a weekly basis. Not on a Sunday and Sunday night and Wednesday. Every single day of our life. I, I may, it may, but I got now where some builders will be like, hey, we need to meet you in the morning. Well, it's 7 30 o'clock before I get out. You can't get up and read and pray earlier? Nope. I, I don't set alarm. I just sleep. When I wake up, I get up, I go in there, and, and I pray and I read and I seek God before I leave. And if I don't, I probably won't leave. I'll probably just stay there. Because I'm telling you, we can get in trouble that way. Amen? Before, I'm still going to pray before I leave. It's my meditation. Day, night. How about you? I preach stuff like this similar. But trust me, I didn't want to bore you, so I went back to all them pages. Lord, this thing's familiar to me. I ain't preached it. Preached stuff similar. But not these scriptures. It all comes out different. Because God wants you to understand. If you're going to understand, you're going to have to keep the Word of God. Stand to your feet as they play something. Glory to God. If you need to pray, just come on up. If anyone needs special prayer, I'll pray with you. If not, just take a few moments in the spirit. Just take a few minutes. Man, when I tell you what I told you at the beginning of service, I felt the presence of God. I still feel the presence of God. For the Lord is in this place. Play something softly, Brother John. I know you're probably looking it up. If anybody needs any special prayer, I'll pray with you. If not, just take a few moments. If nothing else, pray for me. Glory to God. Because, see, it's Wednesday. And I know you won't believe this, but as soon as I leave this building and after I eat tonight and I go home, my mind is already set on Sunday morning. I'm thinking, God. Give me a word. Speak to me, God. Speak to me so I can speak to your children. Lord, give me what you would have me to speak to them and to me that we'll have understanding and knowledge and wisdom and that we'll know what to do next. Lord, I pray over this congregation. I pray over each and every person in this altar. 
God, give them a hunger and a desire for the Word of God. Lord, let us as the Word has said. Have understanding. Help us to have knowledge. Help us to have wisdom. Help us to stay in thy word. Help us to continually talk about it. Help us continually to, to plant your word into other people's lives. Help us to meditate on it day and night. In Jesus' wonderful name. Come on, brother. You need prayer. You heard what I said. That's what it's be right there. It's gonna be right there. You, you know how you get humble. Understand that. It's it's not. I'm gonna pray with you, but I'm gonna pray with you over there. It's something about bowing down to God and lifting up your hands, saying, "I surrender." Surrender. When that cop throws.